Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name's Abby and I'm a full-time furniture refinisher. I bought this mid-century dresser off of Facebook Marketplace for $100 because I knew that it had good bones to refinish, despite all the veneer damage. I really wanted to strip this piece down to the natural walnut, but unfortunately some of the veneer damages were just too big to blend. I got started by removing all this old mismatched hardware with my power screwdriver. This makes it so much faster than using a regular screwdriver, and a drill is too bulky to get into some of the drawers. I use this tool on pretty much every project, and I think I only charge it like once a month. I clean all my furniture with a degreaser like cred cutter or TSP, but dish soap and water will also work. I have never come across a secondhand piece of furniture that wasn't really dirty, so I always recommend cleaning it to save yourself from gunking up your sandpaper. I know it's kind of funny to use a leaf blower, but it's so much faster than vacuuming the inside out. To repair the larger veneer damages, I'm going to use my two-part Bondo wood filler. This is going to dry really hard in comparison to regular wood filler. So I like to tape off the perimeter of the damaged areas so that I could pull back the excess and minimize my time sanding. You really only need a small dab of the Bondo hardener, otherwise you're going to end up running out of the tube. And I found if you add too much, it dries too quick and you don't even have time to apply the product. I'm trying to get neater at this step, but you gotta work quick and I don't do well under pressure. But the good thing about it drying fast is that you don't have to wait so long before moving on to sanding it. I would just mix up a little bit at a time for each repair, otherwise you'll find out that it dries up on you. Next, I use 220 grit sandpaper to scuff sand and smooth out the entire piece. If the Bondo is taking a really long time to smooth out, sometimes I'll drop down to a 120 or 150 grit. Manufactured dressers usually come with a slick lacquered surface, so that's why we want to scuff sand it to make sure that our primer and paint will adhere. I use my 5 inch random orbital sander on all the large flat surfaces because it's super quick and easy. If I notice any smaller nicks and dings while I'm sanding, I use the Bondo Spot Putty to fill them in. This is much easier to sand than the regular Bondo, so it's really great for those small touch up areas that don't need a super durable filler. If you noticed, I switched to my Surf Prep sander here because I knew that I wanted to use their foam abrasives to sand these curved legs. And now we can get to the fun part of painting. This Wagner pop-up spray tent is so quick and easy to set up, but I highly recommend watching the tutorial video on Amazon because when I first got it, I wanted to return it. I was so aggravated trying to figure it out. But it's actually just a simple crisscross pattern and it pops right up. You don't need a second person to set it up. I often get asked if the paint will stick if you leave the drawers in while you're spraying. And the answer is no. It's so much faster to spray with the drawers in, especially when it's an inset dresser like this. If the dresser drawers sit on the outside of the frame, I wouldn't recommend spraying with the drawers in because then you'll miss parts of the frame. To cover up these metal details on the legs, I used frog tape and a razor knife. This tape really is magic for getting clean and crisp lines that you don't have to go back and clean up later. I decided to try a new brand of primer and paint on this piece because I've heard great things about how durable it is. And since I'm selling my furniture, I always want to make sure it's the best quality possible. I hate when paint gets stuck all in the rim of the can, so I like to use a little bit of tape around the edge before I pour it. I'm using my Home Right Super Finish Max paint sprayer for the primer because I know that it can handle thicker products. But honestly, this primer was already a nice consistency. I just added a tiny dab of water. And I always, always filter to avoid getting any clumps in the paint sprayer. 
I think this is the best paint sprayer for beginners by far. It's the first one I ever bought, and as you can see, I've put it through a beating. It's absolutely filthy. I definitely need to change out the filter, but it still works like a charm. Because this primer and paint has higher VOC levels than the paint I usually use, I'm definitely going to make sure I wear my respirator mask. Well, I always wear it, but still. This primer had really great coverage on the first coat, so I'm curious to try out its stain blocking properties in the future on a mahogany piece. The one downside to this primer is that you have to wait four hours before you can recoat it. Instead of cleaning out my sprayer in between each coat, I simply cover it with a Ziploc baggie and a rubber band to seal off the air. I sprayed a second coat of primer because my spray pattern on the first coat missed quite a few spots. So while the primer has a four hour recoat time, the Wise Owl one hour enamel, like the name mentions, just has a one hour recoat time. I'm using my Wagner Flexio 3500 for the paint because it has a lot more setting adjustments and you can get it a little bit more precise without wasting product. I like to test out my spray pattern on a scrap piece of cardboard before I take it to my piece. As you can see, for putting such a dark color on top of this primer, the coverage is absolutely great. While I wait the one hour for this paint to dry, I like to close up my Wagner spray tent so that I can keep any dust and bugs out. In between each coat of paint, I like to hand sand with 400 grit just to make sure it's really smooth. This paint definitely has a sheen to it, so I'd recommend spraying it rather than trying to brush or roll it, or it might turn out splotchy. And if you don't overlap your spray pattern by 50 to 75%, you might find yourself with tiger stripes. Because I sprayed with the drawers in, I just went ahead and used a brush to touch up the edges I missed. This dresser was missing some of the original hardware, so instead of doing all the work of drilling and filling new hardware holes, I just like to use these adjustable ones. They add a really nice and clean modern touch to any piece of furniture. These older dressers usually have drawers that are the same size, but they fit particularly better in a certain place. So I always like to number them for my customers. Next, I tried out this Wise Owl Furniture Salve to polish the drawers and make them look like new. I typically use Howard's Feed and Wax, but this was just as good and it smelt even better. Adding the salve to all the tracks and anywhere that wood touches wood is going to make the drawers slide really smoothly too. To match these metal leg accents to the new hardware, I used antique gold rub and buff to make them look like new. Now staging and listing my piece for sale should be the most fun and rewarding part, but it's actually my least favorite. At this point, I always just want to be done, but staging your furniture and getting bright pictures is so important to selling it. Now, I told you that I bought this dresser for $100 and my plan is to list it for $750. The most I've gotten for a dresser is $650, but I really think that this piece is just so quality before I even touched it. The way that the drawers are constructed, I know that this dresser has another 100 years left in it. 
and I really went the extra mile to make sure this dresser is ready for its new home. Overall, I'm super happy with the way this Wise Owl paint turned out and how durable the finish is. While I don't think it's the most beginner friendly paint, it claims to be 90% cured in 4 hours and I believe it. To me, that's definitely worth the money. Thank you so much for watching and please hit that subscribe button.